In this short video, I'll be looking at using SPSS to carry out simple statistical analysis of a data set. SPSS is probably the standard data analysis package, particularly in the commercial sector, although you may well come across others, such as R, which has the great advantage of being shareware, although it's a little more complicated to use. Stata, which tends to get used in the analysis of longitudinal data or panel data, and uh, even the good old Excel that comes along with Microsoft Word, which has some uses in stats analysis, although it does have some limitations. Uh, you'll find that the skills that you use in learning SPSS will be readily transferable to those other packages. Um, SPSS is window driven, just like most computer applications these days with the slight complication that rather than working with one window, you regularly work with two. That's because one window is devoted to the data set that you're working on, the, the data that you're analyzing, uh, while another window is dedicated to the output from that data, the results of the analysis that you're carrying out upon it. That makes file management a little more complicated than it is with, say, a word processing package, in that you have to deal with two kinds of output. On the one hand, you may well modify your data set while you're working with it. You may create a new variable, or you may correct mistakes in the data set, things like that. In which case, you'll need to save and store a revised, corrected version of your data set as one output from your working session. Uh, the other output which you'll have is, of course, the output in the form of uh, numbers or graphs or tables of the analysis that you've carried out upon your data set. Um, we don't always store the output window. It may well be when you've carried out an analysis that all you're interested in is, is one particular result. And once you have that result, uh, you're not really uh, interested in, in storing and saving the rest of the output. However, it is a good habit to get into early on when dealing with SPSS to be as systematic as possible in the management of your files. It's very easy to quickly create a large number of files which if you haven't identified them properly uh, can lead to a, a little bit of chaos when it comes to finding a particular result that you may remember producing but you're not quite sure when. You open SPSS just like any other application by double clicking on the icon on the desktop. This takes you to the SPSS data editor window. This is the SPSS data editor uh, window uh, and it's looking at a data set that I created from your answers to the small questionnaire that was circulated last week. If you look at the data editor window you'll see that up at the top of the window uh, there's a set of SPSS menus that we'll look at later on. Underneath that there's a toolbar with shortcuts to various commands that you're most likely to use most often. And then underneath you have uh, something that looks like a spreadsheet, which is a data matrix, or what SPSS calls a data editor window. And that simply contains all of the data in the data set, organized in terms of variables that go down the columns and cases that go along the rows. Uh, and if you think of that in terms of questionnaires and answers, um, down the columns you have each question in the questionnaire that gave rise to a variable, uh, and along the rows you have each of the uh, respondents' answers to all of the questions in turn. And if you look down these rows, you'll probably be able to identify uh, your own set of answers. Here I've highlighted the variable maths, which records the answers to the questions asked about what kind of uh, maths qualification you had, if any. And you'll see that for each case it records whether people said they had an A-level, a GSC, or some other qualification. Here I've uh, highlighted one of the cases, which you'll see the results distributed along the rows. Uh, it's a case of somebody who's male, they're married, they work in the private sector, they say they've got some knowledge of stats, they've got a GCSE in maths, they didn't like maths at school, and they expect to scrape through this course.
At the bottom of the data editor window, you'll see a button that allows you to toggle between what SPSS calls data view and variable view. Data view is when you can see the results of all your data in spreadsheet form as a data matrix. Uh, variable view gives you a list of information about each of the variables in the data set and brings up a window like this. In the variable view version of the data editor window, uh, you get a list of all the variables in the data set together with some basic information about those variables. Um, the labels for the variables, which are just a longer description of what the variable is, uh, a list of the values or value ranges that the variable takes, uh, whether it has any missing values, that's something we'll come on to later on, uh, and what level of measurement the variable is. This is the SPSS menu bar that has various tools for locating, selecting, editing, manipulating and sorting data as well as analysing it. You can see from the number of menu items that SPSS is pretty versatile. The menu item we'll be using most will be the Analyse menu. Like all the menus in SPSS, the Analyse menu has a fairly large number of sub-menus within it that you can choose. You'll see that most of these have a black arrow on the right hand side. That just indicates that there's a further menu option we can choose when we select uh, any of the, the sub-menu items in the Analyze menu. Uh, if we go down to Descriptive Statistics and then uh, choose the Frequencies option, we'll issue a command to SPSS to go away and produce us a frequency table. Like any command, SPSS responds with some kind of dialog box asking us for more information. Here's the dialog box for the Frequencies Table command. You'll see that there's a list of all the variables in the data set on the left hand side and in the middle of the dialog box there's a box into which we can put the variables that we want to use to produce our frequency table. We can put one or any number of variables into the box in the middle of the dialog box and SPSS will produce one frequency table for each of the variables that we list there. You'll notice that there's some buttons on the right-hand side of the box and also along the bottom. Uh, two of these buttons are of most interest to us. The statistics button at the top right-hand corner will ask SPSS to produce some stats associated with our variable that we've chosen. And the OK button, highlighted in blue at the bottom right-hand corner, is a button we press to tell SPSS to go away and do things.